Welcome to the Fulton County Library System. This is Kitchen Chemistry. Today we're going to make a pour over coffee. The tools that you need to make a pour over coffee are a grinder, a scale that measures to grams, fresh coffee beans, a small thing to measure those beans in, a craft for take up, a coffee cone or a coffee dripper to put your filter in. I prefer the unbleached, a coffee cup, and freshly boiled water in a gooseneck kettle. That part's very important because the gooseneck allows you to control how much water you pour and how rapidly that you do so. Let's get started. For our grinder, we're gonna set it to a medium grind, which is about 20 grams. We're going to tear out our, our uh, little device here. And based on the size of our coffee cup, this one's about a 350 gram cup. So we're going to measure, or we're going to make coffee at a 17 to 1 ratio of water to beans. So that's going to be about 21 grams in here. It's very important to measure and to not use volume like you would with a drip grinder. It needs to be a little more precise. And there we have our 21 grams. Next, we dump it into the grinder and let it go. It takes about 15 seconds, maybe. Now comes the most exciting part of it. Take out your freshly ground coffee, give it a good smell. That's what everybody in the coffee shops always does. And now we're gonna pour in the water. The water in the gooseneck kettle has been heated to 200 degrees and held. The first thing we want to do is gently dampen the filter all the way around the edges. We want to do that in order to get rid of any kind of a woody flavor that is left in the paper filter. Then we're going to pour out any extra water so that we don't have that woody flavor in our coffee. And we're going to make sure that we've teared our scale so that it's at zero, so that we know when we've actually reached 350 grams from the, from the coffee itself. Pour in the freshly ground coffee. Might want to give it another little sniff there because it does smell amazing. You can either have it like with a mound in the top or you can make a little valley in it or just level it out, whatever, whatever you prefer. Different people use different techniques. Now we're gonna take the coffee, or the hot water, and we're going to begin pouring in circles so that we're evenly soaking the grinds. As it starts to get a little bit uh, raised up in the middle, that's called the bloom. And if you see any bubbles coming out, you're gonna to wanna to stop and let those release. That's called the bloom. And you want it to release that gas because it can make your coffee rather bitter. We continue to pour, going around the edges, but trying not to go down the sides of the filter because then your water is slipping through without soaking any. It makes for a, a more watery brew. So you can go in circles, sort of from the inside out and back in, or do concentric circles, whichever way you kind of prefer. And we're almost there at 350 already. And there we go. We've hit 350 on the mark. So we're gonna give this a minute to drain through. Once the drip is significantly slowed, then we take our craft, get rid of our grinds, pour and enjoy. That is the art of the pour over coffee. Thank you for joining Fulton County Library System and Kitchen Chemistry. Please like, share, and create watch parties.